Hey, it's Mazzy, and this is the it's the music stupid number six. I'm I just pull some albums out, not randomly. I pick five albums from my collection uh, that I've been listening to in the last uh, twenty four hours. So five albums, they don't relate at all, but it's about the music. Remember the music, the music, the music first, and then you know you can get into your uh, audio file and your great pressings that are appropriate for you your taste, your system, your rig, or compact discs, whatever. This is a record I had decades ago, and during my 95 Purge, the two albums by this band I have both got both, both got uh, purged. Whatever the reason was, uh, that's, it wasn't feeling it in 95. And I don't remember how good this record is. But first of all, we'll start at the top of the alphabet. A, B, C. Now, this is their second album. Their first album was a massive hit. Uh, number one in the UK, 1981, Lexicon of Love. Uh, Martin Fry was the lead singer. And that band, I, as I recall, they really kind of wanted to be... They were sort of a punk, post-punk, but wanted to be more soulful little bit of a disco very slick and that was a huge hit it was big here at least uh you know i don't know about chart wise i don't remember but it was a huge hit slick hit very pop very dance very you know the the beginning of the 80s and when this came out i think this is 1982 so this is now 40 years old or is this 83 it might be 82 83 okay but this is a beauty stab. Now, uh, they had a different producer, a different feel. And I just played this, literally, I played it last night. I put it on and I played it again, back to back. And I blasted this mother. This is amazing. And I kind of looked it up to refresh my memory about this record, just some background. And, and the critics hated this record. And a lot of fans... I mean, although it did well, it didn't do anywhere near as well as their debut album. This is more of a, a guitar-based driven album. It's more rock and roll. It's less disco, less soulful, less dance. But the arrangements are amazing. And Martin, I tell you, Martin Fry's voice is really, really good on this. And there's a tightness of uh, the production of the drums, the bass. It's really tight, no reverb. Uh, I really enjoyed it immensely. ABC, uh, their second album, I think it 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 needs a reevaluation. I, I don't know. I haven't read some subsequent reviews now. Uh, they had a ton of records after that. I think the guitarist left after this album. There was a little bit of a shakeup. But I don't follow uh, this band. I never follow them personally in terms of personnel or their output or their reformation. But... Um, you know, there was that time or, uh, around this time, just before, you, there's a little, I think the first or second cut, first couple of cuts have a little bit of that initial 80s uh, filigree of uh, of keyboards, but then it really settles in. This, this album rocks, and the arrangements are really interesting. It's not your typical uh, uh, song cycle, in my opinion. I think this is a fantastic record. And I just got this copy from uh, my friend, in Santa Monica, the wax, right? Is that where I got this from? But I love this, and it sounds great. This is a great pressing. So uh, love this on Mercury Records and American Pressing. Next, an album. I got this as a record club selection. I was part of the uh, Columbia Record Club, or is it BMG? But this is a Warner Brothers release, so this is a record club edition. Again, my original edition from 1971, so it got 51 years on this one. And this is the debut of Crazy Horse. Of course, uh, they were on uh, Neil Young's Everyone Everywhere Knows This Is Nowhere and played with Neil Young on uh, Harvest, the one before Harvest. Uh, my favorite one, which I can't remember right now, uh, with the black and white cover. That's my favorite Neil Young cover. You're, you're yelling at me, give me a break. I'm a senior citizen. Uh, and But I love that that's that album after, uh, just before, prior to Harvest. I'll think of it later. But um, this is a fantastic record. Um, this is the only record uh, solo with Danny Witten. Danny Witten, after this, it would be kicked out of the band, had drug issues, and then OD the following year, 1972. Ry Cooter's all over this record, plays on it. Jack Nitsche, uh is a member who... Uh, Brought in also, Ry Cooter is on this too, because um, Jack Nitsche and Ry Cooter collaborated on this soundtrack to performance together. 
uh, which they uh, need, that uh, Randy Newman's on. And there's a song that Randy Newman plays on performance. I think that Nick Nietzsche wrote it here, which is the opening uh, song, Gone Dead Train, which is really a great version. I mean, you know, they're known as Neil Young's uh, on-again, off-again band that just is killer. And of course, uh, the drums and bass, Ralph Molina and Billy Talbot are the only consistent remaining members for the duration of uh, Crazy Horse with Neil Young over the past 50 years. But love this cover, love this record. Uh, Niels Lofgren, I can't, uh, how can I forget Niels Lofgren? Um, he's all over this record as he was uh, with Neil Young on that record. You're gonna make me go grab it, aren't you? Uh, Neil Young, Neil Young, Neil Young, Neil Young. It is, of course, it's after the gold rush. Of course, it's after the gold rush. How can I forget that? is my favorite album ever. But, um, oh, engineered by Bruce Botnick, who obviously engineered The Doors records. So fantastic records on Warner Brothers, Reprise, Reprise Records, 1971. Now, this is Susie and the Banshees. Susie Sue, uh, punk, post-punk, art rock. Saw them several times, uh, during their uh, initial uh, foray into music and touring. And this is, I think this is their seventh album. This is an all covers record. And I pull this because this is a, a joy every time I listen to. And I think my favorite cover on here that just sounds so good is her cover of Iggy Pop's Passenger. What a great version. It's a great song to begin with, but her, I think I like her version better than Iggy Pop. Uh, but Iggy Pop is great, so it shouldn't be a competition. It's music, right? Just different covers, different versions on here. Uh, they also do uh, my favorite Spark song from their debut album, This Town Ain't Big Enough for the Both of Us. And now Spark's all over everywhere because everyone has uh, either discovered them or rediscovered them, and they have a, a great, uh, you know, great things happening. I love Sparks, and I love that first album, Come On To My House. But this is a fantastic version on here. Uh, this wheel, Wheels on Fire, uh, the great song written by Rick Danko and Bob Dylan, of course, the band uh, played that early on. Great, great version of that on here. That's been used on, was it Abfab, I think? One of those. I'm thinking of that, or I'm thinking of, um, it's a different uh, Dylan song. That's a different Dylan song. Anyway, it's been used on um, uh, uh, some uh, t TV shows and uh I think in the UK, but anyway, if you, I'm sure you've heard it. If you haven't, you need to pick up this record. You can pick up a reissue uh, that sounds real. This is actually a reissue of it that came out about four or five years ago, and it sounds amazing. Also, Your Lost Little Girl, The Doors uh, song, a cover on it. But this is just a really wonderful covers album. You know, covers albums work when the artist reframe the music, rearrange the music and make it theirs. And um, even though The Passenger is very much like um, Iggy Pop's, uh, Susie with her vocal stylings just makes it hers too and makes it the band. Great band, great album. Uh, this is an album a lot of people know. Uh, this happens to be a promo copy that I got from the Coleman collection. And this is uh, Ste Steppenwolf the Second, their second album. And their first two albums had had great kind of reflective foil type covers. And, you know, we all know uh, from their first uh, albums, you know, Born to be Wild. And on here is, of course, is Magic Cop Copper, <laughs> Copper, <laughs> Copperfield, Magic Carpet Ride, Spit It Out, Mazzy, Mazlov, Enunciate. Great song. These two albums... Now, in terms of the audio file treatment, I don't, that's not what these videos are about, but I know Chad Kasim uh, did a comp and he didn't, says, I'm never going to do an audio file comp because you have to really find the, every song on the, on the greatest hits there uh, they did. But I think these two, the first two Steppen albums deserve uh, a new version. Uh, there was a mono, I believe, of the first album. I don't think there was of this, but I love this in stereo. And this is an, every song on here is good. And the thing about Steppenwolf, everybody knows their hits, but not a lot of people know the deep cuts and go beyond it. This opens up with Faster Than a Speed of Life. And I love 
uh, the moniker for the writer who uh, worked with Steppenwolf Mars Bonfire. What a fantastic name. Tighten Up Your Wig, a John uh, K. song. But the fourth song on here is very unusual for Steppenwolf. It's called Spiritual Fantasy, and it's their psychedelic, Baroque-style, uh, string quartet, ethereal, floaty, floaty song, which is beautiful. Beatle-esque, you know, when everyone was going through the flower power type thing. It wasn't that hard motorcycle kind of easy rider type uh, music that uh, we know Steppenwolf with, you know, Born to be Wild. And of course, The Pusher, which is more of a soulful thing on their first album. Great riff on that song. And just Oh man, that tears in a. That's one of those slow tears, uh, the pusher. But spiritual fantasy is great. A sto don't step on the grass, Sam. I used to make uh, mixtapes when I was literally a kid with a small reel to reel tape recorder. I would make these montages and cut up pieces and fuse them together. And then when I was in college in broadcasting, I would do a lot of ed uh, audio editing of these montage backwards tapes and sound effects. And I always use the very end of uh, Don't Step on the Grass, Sam. There's a drug bust and you hear, you know, the cops rush in and there's a toilet flushing. They're flushing their uh, stash down the toilet. And I used to clip that off and use it in a lot of my montages. 28, she's 28 years old tonight. What a great song opening side too. Of course, Magic Carpet Ride and uh, on and on and on. But this is, is, is a wonderful record. I just played it. It sounds good. Uh, this is a crispy uh, version from Coleman's collection. But be, through that, you hear uh, how great it was and how good it sounds. And I think uh, this this deserves a really good reissue, I think. I don't think it's been done. And lastly, uh, I've promoted the fact how I love uh, Nina Simone, one of the great jazz vocalists, political, astute, social, you know, in-your-face artist of the 60s into the 70s and we're always showing uh, her really jazzy soulful records and this is the record that i first got in Niels, nina simone it's from was it 1972 i think 71 also so we're we're doing a lot of 71 things here so this is 51 years old and this is uh, here comes the sun on rca this is more of a folk record for her uh, she does these beautiful covers. It's not as uh, soulful like the other records. Again, it's more on the folk side, but this got me into her and loving her. Of course, she opens up with a wonderful version of George Harrison's Here Comes the Sun. And remember, this is what, just two years after, a uh, year and a half after the Beatles' uh, Abbey Road came out. Just Like a Woman, a fantastic cover of the Dylan song. Ooh, ooh, child. I love that. A, what a great song that is, too. And a, an amazing rendition of uh, Mr. Bojangles, a Jerry Jeff Walker song. I think one of the definitive versions. I've, I just called that song out recently for some reason. And I know uh, David Bromberg does a great live version of it where he tells the whole story of when uh, Jerry Jeff Walker tells the story. Because uh, Bromberg toured with Jerry Jeff Walker for years and would tell the story night after night uh, how he wrote that song. Um, Oh, Angel in the Morning, My Way closes out with, which, you know, yeah, that song, My Way. So, fantastic record, 1971. Uh, I think a lot of people pass on this because they want the real jazzy stuff. They want uh, the earlier records, the Bethlehem records, the reissues. But this is a Dynaflex RCA record, I believe. It certainly is. I love those Dynaflex. And this is uh, this is highly recommended from Mazzy. All these records are highly recommended. So I hope you got a sense of just some five more records that maybe you need to put in your list. And they're not going to be for everyone. That's fine. But maybe there's one here that you may like. So again, I all, I appreciate your support, your continued uh, viewership and comments. Uh, please click the surprise surprise button, and you'll get a you'll get a subscription. You won't get. Uh, belled because you're not going to click the bell button. Maybe that helps me, but I don't want you to get bothered at three in the morning that I posted a video. So thanks again for watching. And I love doing these. So this is, um, it's the music stupid number six, I believe. Mazzy loves you. Thank you.